Hey, this is Dylan from Digital Native, and today we got a fun tutorial planned. We're going to be going over some tips and tricks with the Dirt Node to create a nice grungy mask texture with this model here. So let's get started. All right, so I've got my scene set up here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new material. And we're going to be working in the Node Editor for most of the time here, pretty much the whole time. So just going to open that up and let's change this to gold base and we'll make it a metallic material and then to get a gold look we can mess with the film layer and now there's a bunch of weird stuff you can do with the film layer to get some funky colors if you pump it up too far it gets a little strange so for this purpose here, we're just going to leave the value pretty low to get a nice gold look. And that's looking pretty good. So now we're going to bring in an image texture. We're going to pipe it into the roughness. We want to make sure we use image textures for our texture maps like this. I'm using a pack from French Monkey, his smudge kit. Cool. So roughness is in. We're going to do the same thing for our normal map. So we'll bring in another image texture. Put that into the normal. Now, as you can see, it's already doing something, but it's not really doing what we want. Um, this is because the projection is set to UV mapping and we want to change that to box. So let's bring out our transform and our projection. And this is going to be our master transformer projection for all of our image textures moving forward. So we're going to pipe these into the same ones in the normal map. And change this to box. Now everything is distributing better, but it's a little big, so we need to make this smaller. Great, so now we're getting some nice variation within our gold texture. It's looking pretty good. I'm just going to enable this comparison throughout so we can get a good idea of what's going on. So as you can see, we're adding some nice variation within the gold. It's starting to look a little more worn not as perfect looking so that's a good first step but we want to create some more variation moving forward so now i'm going to bring in a noise and we're going to put this into the bump map give it some more octaves and let's play with the contrast a little bit And then we can add some more variation by adding another noise. So we'll bring in a multiply node and one more and pipe that in. And now these two noises will work in conjunction. They will mix together and give us a nice look. So on the second noise, I'm going to add some more contrast. And on the first one, I'm going to make this one a lot smaller. So bringing out the transform for both of these. And on this second one, we'll make it a lot bigger. Cool. And that's looking a lot better. It was looking a little weird before, but now that we have these two mixing together, it's looking a lot nicer. And we can use our projection from our image textures. It's just set the box where I create a new one, and we can just use that one. Great, and now everything is mixing together nicely. But it looks a little strong on the bump, so I'm going to add this color correction in and play with the gamma sum until we get a look we like. That looks pretty good. We're adding a little more variation. 
into that grunginess. Cool, I think that's good for that. So let's get started and create our next material. This is going to be our dirt. So we'll label this dirt. I'm going to make this a glossy material. Put it on there just so we can see it. And I'll just change this to a darker color, more of a dirt looking color. Looks pretty good. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a noise into the bump map once again, just to get some variation. So right now we have this kind of plasticky look. So I'm going to make the noise smaller, try and get a little finer. And this is going to be a really minor detail. You're not really going to notice this once everything is mixed in, but it's nice to spend the time and just make sure all your materials are up to par. Adding some more contrast here to get some more bump. Now that's looking better. We're actually getting some variation in the dirt. Go ahead and drag in the box projection from the past material. And then we'll just play with these settings a little more. Cool, that's looking good. And I uh, like to leave the specular map on when I'm doing the bump map, just so you can see it a bit better. But uh, we can go ahead and dial that back a bit now. And then let's add some roughness. So now everything isn't so sleek and shiny. And now we have our two materials here that we are going to mix together. So step one and two are done. From here, we just want to create a mix material. And we'll call this mask mix one. And we'll put our textures in. And let's put the mix onto our mesh. Cool. So the materials are mixing together, but they're just stacking one on top of another, which is not what we want. So let's add a dirt node and we'll put that into the amount. And then right away, we should see some thing here. There we go. So we're already in a good spot. Our dirt texture is mixing into the crevices of the mesh. And overall looks pretty good, but it's a little too perfect looking still. But it's come a long way from that original gold texture, so we're in a good spot. But we want to add some more variation here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in a multiply node. And we want to multiply this with another image texture, so I'll bring that in. And I'm going to be using the AO from the same pack that we used before. It has nice white and black values that we can use to drive this dirt node a little harder. And right now our dirt and this AO is mixing together to give us some more variation within our dirt. But the projection of the transform is a little off, and we want to use the same projection and transform we created in the beginning. And this is the good part about using this universal transform and projection nodes, is all of our image textures have the same local space on the mesh, which uh, kind of allows the dirt node to more weave itself into those other imperfections that we created with those original textures. But we can take this even a step further. I'm going to add a mix texture. And when you pipe it in, it wants to go into the amount. We don't want that. We want to use the two texture slots. So let's fix that really quick. 
And then we're going to grab a Cinema 4D noise for this one here. I'm going to make the scale smaller. And from here we're able to play with the brightness and contrast. And you can't really see it because I haven't plugged it in. So let me plug that in. Great. And now you see we're getting a little too much dirt around the whole thing. If we play with the contrast and the brightness, at a low brightness we'll get a lot of dirt. With a higher brightness we'll start to get rid of some of that overlying dirt that we created just now. But as you can see, it's breaking up our dirt a lot nicer. It's not so perfect. It's not going into every little crevice. It's kind of more spread out and unified throughout the mesh. So this is looking good. Cool, so we finished our first mix. We can move all of this over and start working on our second mix. And you can go on and on. You could keep stacking mixes and adding more and more detail. For our purpose, we're just gonna stick with two. So I'm gonna drag in another material. And for now, I'm going to make this a pink color just so we can see it. And I'll call this Metal Edges. And then we're going to want to use the same nodes we created in the beginning, just to add some variation to this one. I'm going to grab the bump and put it in, and I'm also going to grab the normal map and plug that in as well. So now we've got our new material, and we want to mix that in with our other mix. I'm going to call this Mask Mix 2. Put that on our mesh and then let's put these in the slots cool so we're going to grab another dirt node and put that into the amount again and you'll see we're getting kind of what we had before where it was in the crevices but if we invert this it will be on the edges so that's nice but it's a little too fat and blobby looking what I can do to fix that is take down the radius and then we'll pull up the detail as well with the strength. And now you can see what we're getting here and this is why it's nice to use a uh, solid material like a pink or something to really see what you're doing. You get a little lost when you're using something that kind of blends in with the mesh a little more so this is looking good and we're going to use the same kind of workflow we did with the other mix i'm going to add a multiply and since we already have our ao set up with the projection and everything let's just drag that into here and now it's a little strong so we're going to add a color correction and pipe that in And then we can just play with the gamma to kind of offset some of that nastiness we were getting. So now we have our edging and we also have some more variation within the mesh, which is looking nice. We can play with our gamma here. But that looks pretty good. So now we're going to do what we did before. We're going to grab a mix texture and a Cinema 4D noise. And then let's fix the amount. And same thing we did before. Let's just play with our brightness and contrast. You could also play with the scale and the noise type. But for this tutorial, I don't think it's necessary. Cool, so there we go. We've kind of weathered down some of those edges we were getting in certain places. It's not, so it's not perfect on every little edge of the mask. Now we're getting some nice variation. Another note is in this mix texture, we can use the 
amount to control how much edge we're getting or how much dirt we're getting. See, we can go back to our other one and play with that. Because the value of zero will be one thing and the value of one will be the other with 0.5 being a nice mix. So. so let's fix this texture now. I'm gonna make it a metallic and already things are looking a lot nicer. You can see all that detail we kind of pushed in with this next mix. And another thing, I'm gonna add some, I'm just gonna add a little bit of this film layer to give it a nice kind of tint. Wanted to go with something a little blue with uh, some like orange green in the middle. So that looks, looks pretty good. It blends with our mesh really nicely. And we can go back to our mix texture and mess with the overall edging, how much is there. Ooh, that's looking pretty good. You can see the final layer of detail we've added. And it really makes a difference. When you keep stacking these mixes on top of each other, you just start adding more and more detail into your mesh. Big difference from the start of this tutorial, we can see all these fine details. And this is all due to the fact that we used a uniform transform and projection space within our image textures. Everything is working together to create this cohesive mix of materials. Cool, so that's gonna be about it for this texturing tutorial. If we zoom in, you can see a lot of the fine details that we created in our mix. One last comparison to see where we started and where we ended up with. Big difference. This whole mesh feels a lot more tangible now. It doesn't feel like fake. It doesn't feel like some fake gold thing anymore. So Now here's the mask on a character. I thought I'd show what it looks like in action. I've been messing with this character, messing with Marvelous Designer some and some mocap data. We actually got hold of a mocap suit from uh, Rococo. That's pretty cool. And uh, been putting it through some tests. Still have a lot to figure out. But um, if you guys are interested in learning a lot more about mocap data, uh, the overall pipeline of character animation, then uh, stick around because we got a lot planned and um, we want to make some cool things. One last thing before I go, we just made all of our stock packs on our website free, so go ahead and check it out. We got a mountain displacement pack as well as some transitions, as well as some animated typography that you guys can go ahead and start using in uh, any of your projects. So those are going to be free. We've got some more resources on the way, and I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed the tutorial, learned something new, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.